everyone and welcome back to English with Lucy. Today I have an advanced listening lesson for you, but don't worry, you don't have to be at an advanced listening level to participate and understand. This lesson is more about showing you how to reach an advanced level. I'm going to teach you how to start understanding fast English conversations and fast native English speakers. In this lesson, I've got three listening activities for you to do, so please have a pen and paper ready. Let's start with exercise number one. This exercise is all about showing you the importance of vocabulary. Many listening exams will have a gap fill exercise where you're given a passage of text and you have to listen to an audio and fill in the gaps. The same goes for natural fast English conversation. You may understand the majority of the words, but you may miss some key words that are essential to understanding the conversation. How can you understand a passage of text or a fast English conversation if you don't know the vocabulary? Yes, sometimes you can understand the context and many exams will rely on this for the easier questions, but to get full marks, you need to have a broad and expansive vocabulary. On your screen, there will appear a gap fill exercise. I'm going to read this text and I would like you to see how many of the words you can fill in. I will read this once, but please replay it if you feel like you need to listen again. Before you attempt any of the exercises in this lesson, please turn off the subtitles because they could ruin your chances of giving a genuine attempt. Are you ready? Let's begin. Over the past two decades, the average annual death rate of climbers on Mount Everest has remained at about six. But this spring, at least 10 people have already been reported dead or missing on the world's highest peak. This is also the season that saw a record 381 climbing permits issued by the Nepalese government. In reality, this means about 600 people were preparing to embark on the climb, with permit holders accompanied by support staff up the mountain. Make sure you play that again if you need help. Here are the answers. Now, none of this is truly specialised vocabulary. So it's likely that if you have a broad vocabulary, you'd be able to do this exercise. Listening and vocabulary go hand in hand. And if you're struggling with your listening, really consider improving your vocabulary, or at least trying to improve your vocabulary. One of the best ways of doing this is picking up vocabulary on your own in your daily life and combining that with a structured curriculum. You get the best of both worlds. You learn words that you have to learn because they're on the curriculum, and you also learn words that you need to learn because you come across them all the time. I truly believe that's the perfect combination. I highly recommend Lingoda, the sponsor of this video, for exactly that reason. Lingoda is an online language school that offers English, business English, German, French and Spanish. You can learn from anywhere in the world in small group or private classes 24-7 with native qualified teachers from the UK and the US. It costs from only eight euros per class. That is incredible value for money. And where it links back to this lesson, you can choose from over 1000 classes. So you will always be able to progress on the subjects and skills that are relevant for you. If you want to try before you buy, there is also the option of a free trial. Lingoda have given me a special offer to pass on to you. If you click on the link in the description box and sign up using my code LUCY10, you will get a 25% discount on all Lingoda packages for your first month. I've tried Lingoda myself and I think it's a fantastic way of improving your language skills, especially your listening skills and your vocabulary skills. If you schedule in frequent classes, they will skyrocket, I promise. So to summarise this first exercise, it was more about showing you the importance of vocabulary. There are lots of tips and tricks that I can give you to help you improve your exam prospects, but realistically, if you don't know the words, how are you going to understand the words? I've got lots more videos on expanding your vocabulary, which you can use if you want to improve your listening. I know it sounds like they don't go together, but they really, really do. 
Now, let's move on to exercise number two. This is an exercise that you can practice at home as much as you want. It's a speed alteration exercise. This exercise is so, so effective if you practice it frequently. If you commit to doing this exercise every day for a month or for two months, I guarantee you your listening will improve so much. The best thing about this exercise is it's one that you can create for yourself at home with very little effort. If you have a YouTube account, which I presume you do because you're watching this video, unless it's been illegally downloaded, which makes me very, very angry, <laughs> well, you have all the tools and resources to create your own speed alteration exercise. For this one, you really do need a pen and paper. Let me show you how it works. I'm going to give you a short audio. I'm going to play it at a slightly slower speed than normal. I want you to write down everything you hear. It might be a full sentence, it might just be words. I'm then going to play it again at normal speed and I'm going to play it one more time at fast speed. During each of the three times that I play the audio, I want you to be writing down what you hear or editing what you've written down. Again, remember to turn off subtitles or you will completely ruin the exercise for yourself. Are you ready? Let's begin. The British supermarket chain Waitrose is starting a trial aimed at reducing packaging by removing plastic from flowers and plants and offering more loose fruit and vegetables. Customers will be able to use their own containers to buy and refill produce such as pasta, rice and cereals. Okay, now I'm going to play it at normal speed. Are you ready? Let's begin. The British supermarket chain Waitrose is starting a trial aimed at reducing packaging by removing plastic from flowers and plants and offering more loose fruit and vegetables. Customers will be able to use their own containers to buy and refill produce such as pasta, rice and cereals. And I'm going to play it once more at fast speed. Are you ready? Let's begin. The British supermarket chain Waitrose is starting a trial aimed at reducing packaging by removing plastic from flowers and plants and offering more loose fruit and vegetables. Customers will be able to use their own containers to buy and refill produce such as pasta, rice and cereals. Here is what I said, and once again at normal speed. The British supermarket chain Waitrose is starting a trial aimed at reducing packaging by removing plastic from flowers and plants and offering more loose fruit and vegetables. Customers will be able to use their own containers to buy and refill produce such as pasta, rice and cereals. When it's a now this is a really interesting exercise because it really affects the brain in a funny way. When you turn something down to slow speed, it gives you more time to think about what you're hearing. When you turn it back to normal speed, it sounds really, really fast. But again, it gives you another chance. When you put it onto fast speed, it sounds almost impossible to understand, but because you've already heard it twice and at slower speeds, you can still pick things up. And then when you play it the final time to check your answer at normal speed, well, it seems much easier. Now, I would like you to find YouTube videos in the accent that you desire. Maybe it's a TED talk, maybe it's your favorite YouTuber, maybe it's some of my videos. I want you to listen to them once in slow speed, once at normal speed, and once at fast speed. Then go back to normal speed and see how much more you understand. If you want to do the writing down exercise, I encourage you to take very short videos or snippets, maybe one minute, of news videos or commentary videos. If you do maybe two minutes a day, you play it slow, normal, fast, then normal again. If you do that every day for 30 days, I guarantee you will start becoming much more used to listening to fast English conversations. It's a really great technique, but it does need a little bit of dedication. Exercise number three is connected speech. I'm going to say this sentence quite a few times. I think I'm going to say it four times. I recommend that on the first time you just write down what you hear. If it's letters, maybe it's just a load of letters that you hear or random words. Then over the next couple of times that you hear it, try and make it out into a full sentence. 
what you're doing is training your brain to adapt to connected speech. Ready? Let's begin. I'd been intending to visit it for a long time. I was so amazed by the absolute beauty of it. I'd been intending to visit it for a long time. I was so amazed by the absolute beauty of it. I'd been intending to visit it for a long time. I was so amazed by the absolute beauty of it. I'd been intending to visit it for a long time. I was so amazed by the absolute beauty of it. So the full sentence was, I had been intending to visit it for a long time. I was so amazed by the absolute beauty of it. But I said it in a very natural, connected speech fashion. Instead of saying I had, I said I'd. Instead of saying been intending, I said been intending. Instead of saying to visit it, I said to visit it. T with the schwa, visit it. Instead of for a long time, I said for a long time. For a long time. Instead of I was so amazed, I said I was so amazed. I was so amazed. Instead of by the absolute, by the absolute, by the absolute. Instead of beauty of it, I said beauty of it. Right, let's talk about why. Well, we don't speak like robots, we use connected speech. Now, I do have a whole video on connected speech. I'm going to give a brief overview now, but the technique I've just shown you is a really good thing to practice because it gets you thinking about connected speech. If you have an English teacher, you could ask them to send you some sentences and have you work out what they're saying. It's something you could request in a private class. There are four parts of connected speech that I'm going to talk about. The first one is catenation. This is when a consonant sound at the end of one word, and note I say sound, it's not just a letter, it's all about the phonemes. A consonant sound at the end of one word is joined with the vowel sound at the beginning of the following word. An apple, an apple. And in the example sentence, been intending, been intending. That's catenation. There's also intrusion. This is when two words are said together, an extra sound might be placed between them to make it easier to say. I am, I am. You are, you are. I explain this more in my connected speech video, which I've linked down below. But if our mouth is wide, like E, then we normally do a Y sound. And if our mouth is round, like O, then we normally do a w sound. E, y, u, w. For example, the sentence, we all play out. We all play out. Play, again, it's this wide sound, yout. We all play out. Now take this sentence, go out to open. Go out to open. It's the u round shape, so we use a w sound. We also have the er sound. For example, there is, there is. Better alone, better alone. Now in British English, we don't tend to pronounce the R's at the ends of words, but those secret R's are still there. So they come out when the following word begins with a vowel sound. Again, more detail in my connected speech video. In the example sentence, the absolute became the absolute with a y sound. We also have elision, which is the omission of one or more sounds. It can be a vowel sound, a consonant sound, a whole syllable. A common form that is clear to see is contractions. Do not becomes don't. Is not becomes isn't. In the example sentence, I had became Iod. Lastly, we have assimilation. This is where two phonemes come together and change into a new phoneme which is easier to say. For example, don't you becomes don't you. That's because t and y come together to make a ch sound. 
Don't you like it? Don't you like it? D and Y come together to make a J sound. For example, did you like it? Did you like it? Right, that's it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and I really hope you enjoyed doing the exercises, especially exercise number two. Please, if you practice that often, you will notice a marked difference. Don't forget to check out Lingoda. You can click on the link in the description box and use my code LUCY10 for a 25% discount on all Lingoda packages for your first month. Don't forget to connect with me on all of my social media. I've got my Facebook, I've got my Instagram, and I've got my Twitter. And I shall see you soon for another lesson. Mwah.